This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the best online retailer for Magic the Gathering singles and sealed product. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one source for Magic the Gathering news and content. Before we jump into this week's deck tech, I want to let you know that right now, at this very minute, you can go over to the Gathering Magic YouTube channel and see one of my exclusive previews with GatheringMagic.com. Click anywhere on the screen right now, it'll take you right over there, but make sure you do come back and finish the deck tech here. Also tomorrow, there will be another exclusive Commander 2014 preview on my channel, CMDR Decks, right here, right now. So if you'd like, go ahead and click that subscribe button and you'll see that tomorrow night. Right now, I'm going to throw it to Roe, a Commander Walker expert, for today's deck tech. Okay, today I am going to be doing my Tezzeret Agent of Bolas Commander Walker EDH deck. Okay, so this is Tezzeret Agent of Bolas. This is who I am using for my Planeswalker Commander right now. Um, his plus one is to look at the top five cards of the library and put an artifact, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library. Uh, this deck is primarily artifacts, so that really just reads uh, draw a card, and you can get to some of your combo pieces with that. Uh, he has a minus one where you can make an artifact become a 5-5 artifact creature. Um, there's a lot of ways to use that. i got a lot of cheap artifacts in here, a lot of indestructible artifacts in here. Um, and then his ultimate, which is negative 4, which is really easy to, to hit because he comes out at 3. Uh, so just the, the turn after he comes out, he can ultimate, is target player loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of artifacts you control. So you can you can kind of one shot somebody out of the game with that if it's if it's later okay so I've got a few basic lands islands and some swamps just a couple swamps um, glimmer void is great. Can add either blue or black as long as I control an artifact. Uh, command tower. It's wonderful. Uh, I have several dual lands. So Gilgate, Drown Catacomb, uh, the Karoo land, <clears throat> the Snow dual land, the Refuge, um, both the Vivids. Uh, Ink Moth Nexus is great because that land can turn into an artifact creature. Um, with flying and infect, and you can make it a 5 5 with Tezzeret's middle ability. Uh, same with the artifact lands, you can make those into 5 5s, so that's why they're in here. And the Dark Steel Citadel being the best, probably because it's indestructible. A uh, few utility lands. Um, I, use, I like this one, I, I use my graveyard sometimes, so I don't mind discarding stuff if I'm gonna get it back later. Uh, Teleria West is really there to get me the uh, Academy Ruins. Okay, a few more. Um, Frexius Quarter is a great sack outlet for artifacts. There's Academy Ruins. Um, I've used this in conjunction with Mindslaver many times to end the game. Just uh, take everybody's turns forever. Uh, Reliquary Tower, believe it or not, this deck can draw a lot of cards, so I want to keep them. Uh, these <clears throat> colorless lands are, are really just in here because, I mean, I'm playing artifacts, so I don't really need to worry about the color in most instances. Uh, Ancient Tomb and Temple of the False God both tap for two mana. Um, the Urza trilogy here. And onto the deck. So, I put these in order of converted mana cost. And we'll start with Dark Steel Relic. It's free to play, it's indestructible, and it does nothing. But with Tezzeret, you can make it a 5 5. Then you have a 5 5 indestructible that costs you nothing. Uh, Ornithopter, along a similar vein. Um, O2 Flyer, pretty useless, but 5 5 Flyer is not. 
uh, Tormod Script. I usually put this in a deck and then I cut it because it it hoses people, but it doesn't it doesn't do a lot else. But here I can make it a five five artifact creature. Um, Ever Flowing Chalice will make me a lot of mana. Relic of Genetus is like the Tormod Script uh, one I personally like better though. Expedition map. We'll go get me the Academy of Ruins. Uh, this thing is pretty great. Uh, Dark Steel Axe is an okay piece of equipment, but it's in here mainly so I can make a 5 5 indestructible creature. Sorry. Um, this is a little Executioner's Capsule, a little kill shot artifact that maybe I can get back. Uh, maybe I just make it a 5-5 creature. Uh, the top. We'll take key. Leads for some combo -y stuff and is a cheap artifact. Codex Shredder. Um, this card is neat. Messes with Vampiric Tutor. And acts as a regrowth. Uh, Steel Overseer is fantastic. <clears throat> All those little 5-5 five -five artifact dudes uh, can get 1-1 one -one counters on them. Uh, Acre Wellspring comes into the battlefield to draw a card, and when it leaves, you draw a card. Uh, Pilipala is a little combo, little combo machine, and he's a pretty cheap artifact, so he's he's on theme. Uh, you pair this guy up with the Grand Architect, and he makes infinite mana. Therium Sculptor makes my artifacts cost less. Throne of Throne of Geth is a sack outlet for artifacts and it has proliferate on it and since we're using uh, planeswalkers as our commanders that proliferate is extremely relevant cranial plating is a great piece of equipment often get, gives a guy a huge bonus uh, ratchet bomb will deal with tokens really well um, yeah there's any number of things to do with that Liquid Metal Coating will help turn one of your things into an artifact, or maybe somebody else's thing into an artifact. My Cousin's Wellspring is like the Icar Wellspring, only this one puts a land card in your hand when it comes in and when it leaves. Contagion Clasp is another little uh, proliferator. Howling Mine, I haven't done this yet, but I really want to bring it in and get it tapped so that nobody else is drawing cards but me. Maybe make it a 5-5 and swing in. Uh, maybe use it in conjunction with like Clock of Omens or something. Something that gets it so that I'm drawing the cards and other people are not. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker. When we are using Planeswalkers as commanders, this guy is pretty great because he can come in and just nerf their Planeswalker Commander. Uh, Chief Engineer, I haven't gotten a chance to play with this card yet, it's a new addition. Um, artifact Spells have Convoke, I think that sounds pretty good. Time Sieve, um, <clears throat> use this with the Thopter Assembly, I'm sure you've heard before, you can take infinite turns. Lightning Greaves. Shimmermer is a great little, great little guy. Um, cast your artifacts with Flash, and he has Flash himself. Skeleton Shard. I can use this to get artifact creatures from my graveyard to my hand. Um, the Mimic Vat. Anything that comes into play. Uh, this thing is really, this thing is really great for that. Um, there's another sack outlet for artifacts, and you can use it to draw a card. I've used that a lot. That's actually been really great for me. This is the other guy that I was talking about with Pila Paula that he can go infinite mana. Um, you just end up tapping, tapping Pila Paula to untap himself. Um, and he's useful otherwise, the Grand Architect is. Uh, Dark Steel Ingot. It's a great little mana piece that can also double as an indestructible creature. You do Tezzer's thing on it. Uh, Mer Galvanizer. I've got quite a few Mer in here, and I like the untappability on him. Here's another one uh, Dark Steel Mer, Indestructible 01. Uh, Oblivion Stone. This is <clears throat> another cheap artifact 
board wipe. Well, cheap to play. Uh, the ability is kind of expensive, but uh, I like these on board uh, board wipers. Lady Mur, another mana dork. Master of Ethereum, um, power and toughness equal to your artifacts, and it gives them all plus one, plus one, so he makes your other guys bigger, and he's probably going to be pretty big. Uh, the Proteus Staff can tuck people's creatures, or you can do it on your own little guys and get something cooler. Uh, Chromatic Lantern is another mana rock that I use to double as a 5-5 five, five creature. Treasure Mage will go get me one of the big uh, artifacts in here. I don't run a lot. I don't run the giant ones because that's not really the point of this deck. So I'm not running like the Colossus and stuff. Uh, but I do want to get out like the Thopter Assembly and the Worm Coil Engine. So that's what he's for. Salt Monolith is great. Mana Rock. Jester's Cap is good for reaching in and messing with other people's decks. Uh, this guy says when you play an artifact spell, you draw a card, so if you get him out early, uh, you're going to draw cards off him if he stays on the board. Prototype Portal will help you make copies of artifacts, and if they're cheap artifacts, it's really easy to put them out with the Prototype Portal. I really like that. Lodestone Myr, um, if you start building up a little army, this guy can just, just get in and finish. Icy Manipulator, Unwinding Clock, uh, all your permanents are artifacts pretty much, so untapping them on each other player's untap step is pretty great. Tezzer's Gambit <clears throat> is a draw spell and you proliferate. Okay, Arkham Daxon. Uh, this guy can tutor out some of your stuff in the deck, very easy. Uh, Clock of Omens. This is a way to tap artifacts, and maybe you can untap that prototype portal, put out another soul ring. Um, I haven't done too much with it yet. I'm waiting to see if I can figure out something to do with it in here. Uh, Colony Gem. It's another mana rock. Uh, it's pretty good. It adds two of any color to your mana pool. I'm a fan of that. Uh, mirror works. This is like the prototype portal, only you just get, if you pay two when an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you get a copy of it. So, uh, two soul rings are better than one. Stuffy Doll is an indestructible artifact, and yeah, it'd be great if he was a 5-5. Five five. So, that's what I'm going to try and do. Mirror Matrix is another indestructible artifact. It also puts out Mirror. Uh, if you have infinite mana, you can put out infinite mer with this thing because it does not cause it to tap. Here's the Thopter Assembly. puts out a bunch of little 1-1 one -one Thopters. You can use those for for fodder for other things, or you can make them into big creatures and swing in. Uh, the Worm Coil Engine is pretty much the colorless titan, and it is fantastic. Here's Mind Slaver. I've <clears throat> won the game with this to lock lock it down a couple times. It's This thing's been pretty great. Uh, I really want to turn it into a 5-5 five five and swing it though. I think that would be fun. Contagion Engine is another proliferate card. Can can wipe an opponent's board, can up your planeswalker. That's pretty good. Uh, my Cosmic Lattice. I'm try not trying to blow up everybody's lands with this. I'm just trying to to make sure all of my stuff is an artifact and get some synergy. And maybe all the lands will die. I don't know. Spine of a saw uh, destroys any permanent. And if you have one of those sack outlets, you can bring it back to your hand. And last, the dark steel forge. If you do. Get out the My Cosm Flatus and you put this out, then your whole board is indestructible. And that's it. Thanks for watching CMDR decks. Please subscribe and favorite.